ओम ज्ञान ज्ञानंजनाशोला चक्षुर तस्म श्रीगुरव श्रीचैन्य मनोभीष्ट स्थापित जैन भूतले स्वयं रूपति स्वादिकना सिंधो दीन बंधु जगते गोपेशा गोपिखा खा राधा खात नमोस्तुते तप्त कंसन गौरंगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी भानुसुथे देवी प्रणमा प्रिय नमो महाभरण्याय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदाय थे कृष्णाय कृष्ण चैतन्य नाम्ने गौर त्रिजे नम श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य पुनिद्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधार श्रीवास हरि गौर भक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो वेलकम एंड वेरी मच फॉर कमिंग टू आवर संडे सत्संग प्रोग्राम दिस इज आवर सेकंड प्रोग्राम फ्रॉम आवर न्यू रिट्रीट सेंटर in Veracruz, Mexico. And we're very happy to be here. It's a beautiful place. The weather is fantastic. The people are very nice and wonderful. Uh they keep many cows. But even when the cows can't give milk, they still don't kill them. They put them on a pasture up in the hills someplace and just leave them alone and uh, let them enjoy life. So that's the way life should be. We should be enjoying life. Huh? But actually this play in this world there are only two kinds of people who really enjoy life. A complete fool <laughs> who is so stupid he realizes that he's suffering and the self-realized soul, the enlightened soul. So two kinds of people enjoy life. Everybody else is suffering. why because of desire we have some desire for a separate enjoyment or individual pleasure and because we have this separate desire then that puts us into conflict with kinds of other people who want the same thing so from the very beginning we're dealing in sphere of conflict and competition Com- for sense enjoyment competition for wealth competition for power for supremacy knowledge everything in this material world is competition and this competition actually this war between people the limited resources of the material world is what ruins because instead of having a nice peaceful life we always have to worry about well, what's the other guy do and how try to mess me up we never have a moment's peace this anxiety until actual self realization then we understand that oh actually i'm not meant to in all these things in this material world i have to go to the spiritual world and the object of enjoyment for the supreme lord once we accept this position ontological status of being a servant then there's no more anxiety no more competition uh no more worry oh i have to look out for number 1 because uh there's all these people like me uh well even if they are out to get you to worry about it isn't it so why not give up all this anxiety and fear uh i was just reading in the scripture last night fear begins from the moment that we become a competitor with the supreme lord for enjoying his property this world is free it's not our property we didn't make this world we didn't create the real elements we didn't even create these bodies that we live in 
These are all a gift from the Supreme Lord. But if we misuse this gift for our own purposes instead of to follow his purposes, then we're a thief. Isn't it? Just like now there's a big controversy about downloading stuff on the internet. TV shows and records, stuff like that. Because the people who made it, recording companies, somehow they, they have a license. Huh? They say they own it. And so they don't want anyone else to enjoy it unless they pay money. And if anyone does, then they sue them. Huh? And there's a big conflict going on. Oh, music free. Information should be free. And then there's all these other people saying, no, it's ours. We created it. We own it. You have to pay us. Uh, so there's a big conflict, a big argument about this in the material world. But in the spiritual sense, there's no question about who actually owns all this property in the material world. It's God. Why? Because God created it. Uh, God made it, so it's his property. Simple. End of story. So if we respect God's property, God's uh, ownership rights, and we'll take these gifts, these resources in the material and engage them according to his direction, his instructions, to serve his purposes. And what is his purpose? Well, he wants everybody to get out of this material world and come back to the spiritual world and enjoy with him, serve him. When we serve him, then we... How is it possible? Well, consider my hand, for example. If my hand takes the food and puts it in my mouth, uh, then the hand enjoys. But if the hand tries to eat the food, it, then it's not going to enjoy anything. It's going to suffer because there won't be any energy in the whole body. The, the duty of the hand is to deliver the food to the mouth. Then the hand enjoys automatically without any further endeavor. Similarly, we are meant to offer all of our resources, all of our energy, all of our work to the Lord because he's the actual owner, the actual proprietor. And when we deliver the fruit of our work to the Lord in sacrifice, then we enjoy automatically. I'm not going to try to prove this because it's up to you to try it and see how it works. I could sit here and talk about it for hours and hours, but that's not going to uh, give you the experience of doing it because the enjoyment that we get from this service of God is subtle. It's interior. It's subjective. It's within our own consciousness. Huh? So you can't see it from the outside, necessarily. But if I say, for example, what, what number and color am I thinking of? Uh, there's no way for you to know that unless I tell you, oh, I'm thinking of a yellow four. Huh? So similarly, you can't know the enjoyment that I'm feeling, uh, the subtle enjoyment that I feel from serving the Lord. You can't know that. There's no way. I mean, you can see, yeah, I look kind of happy and healthy and like that, you know, but there's a lot of people who look like that. Huh? So what's the real criterion? The real criterion is there's no anxiety. There's no uncertainty. There's no doubt. Everything is clear. Huh? Because why? I'm not in competition with the Lord. I'm serving the Lord. So when we serve the Lord, we get this subtle enjoyment within our soul, within our consciousness. And only we can feel that. Uh, so you have to do the same kind of work that I'm doing. You have to study this esoteric teaching, understand it, apply it in your own life, and then teach others. Why? Because that's the instruction of the Lord in the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, he says, of all the servants in this world, the one who teaches this secret teaching is the most dear, and there will never be another one dear than him. Why? Because this is the reason why the Lord comes to this, why he disseminates so many scriptures, so many religions, so many teachings about spiritual life. It's just to benefit the living entities. 
because they're his children. Uh, just like if you see your son or daughter wandering around on the street, you know, starting out on drugs or something like that, you'd want to help them. You'd want to bring them back to a normal condition of life. Similarly, when the Lord sees the living entities struggling in the material world, trying to enjoy something that's not theirs, uh, and suffering as a result, then he wants to restore them to their original, sane, spiritually healthy condition by giving all these spiritual teachings. So if we help do that, uh, he says he wants us to in scriptures. So if we do 